There's a photo right in front of us which was taken on the 20th of April by an American pilot. Everything, so nine days before Dachau was liberated by US troops, everything which is surrounded by the green line was Dachau concentration camp. The part which we are going to see today is a rectangular part named for the letter A, the prisoner's camp. And we're also going to see the purple part, B, the gas chamber and crematorium area. And um, the gas chamber and crematorium area was separated from the prisoner's camp. Do you see that? Do you have any idea why they had separated that part from the prisoner's camp? Sorry? So they wouldn't know? Correct. That was the uh, idea behind it. C, the biggest part, it's important to understand Dachau today, were barracks. Dachau was not only one of the first, con the first concentration camp, role model and standard for all the others. Dachau was also school. 3,000 young men were constantly trained and educated here to become guards in concentration camps. I picked them from the age of 16. Many had never finished the school. They had no chance to find a good job. Here you could achieve something. You could become a commander, for instance, later in another concentration camp. If you were smart, cruel enough to torture and kill prisoners, you got a better job. First, he later built Auschwitz. He got a command from Himmler to build Auschwitz. He had started as a young man in Dachau. He was smart and scrupulous enough to torture and kill prisoners. So he became a commander. All prisoners which were imprisoned here had to work. And in a way, for all these young men here, they had as a trainee ground a prisoner's camp and also a gas chamber and crematorium. By the way, the oldest building which we could see, this pinkish building, is this one here. Most of the other buildings of the old ammunition company are gone. They were knocked down. That's the how today. The part which we're going to see, we are here. There's the museum, it's a building behind you on your left side. It was the building where the prisoners were processed into the system. The left wing is administration. We are going there in a couple of minutes. I'll show you something. Behind the museum is a prison, which we can't see from here. It's anyway a bit strange because we are already. Right. So if you're a prisoner in a prison and then someone is prison from another prison, in that prison you're in prison five years. <laughs> Well, the fence is original here and here. i show you that later. We have four memorial churches and the convent. They were built after the liberation, during the days when it was a concentration camp. There were definitely no churches here. 30 barracks where the prisoners had to live in, they're all gone. Two were rebuilt. The only two buildings which are not original anymore. Everything is original here in Dachau, apart from those two barracks. Behind you on your right side. All the barracks, 30, were knocked down after World War II by Germans and they used the building material of all the 30 huts here to build their own houses here. And when they had decided to open the memorial site in the 60s, 1963 and 65, they rebuilt two of the barracks. Just for us to give us a bit of an idea how prisoners had to live in there, we are going into one of the barracks later. And we have an entrance today from the former prisoners camp into the gas chamber and crematorium area. Well, that didn't exist yet. Otherwise, it's for us as visitors, otherwise we couldn't go there, because here are still barracks. One, after the liberation by the Americans of Dachau concentration camps, uh, the Americans turned the whole site here in a US military base, up to the middle of the 70s, when they left the Bavarian state police roof on the back side. So there are still police barracks, and we are not allowed to use the original entrance, which was always firstly onto the barrack side, and from here prisoners were separated either into the prisoner's camp or into the gas chamber and crematorium area. So they built this for us. Then we have the road court square. Let's turn around, have a look up to this open place. about that but we had some drawings from prisoners up to 40,000 that's how it looked 5 15 in the morning mm -hmm. 7 in the evening a roll call lasts an average an hour sometimes two hours some roll calls last four hours there were roll calls they last eight hours the longest one was in February 1943 14 hours 
I had to stand like this still. In February this year, we had temperatures around 15 degrees Celsius minus the snowboard. That high, so you can imagine only the stronger ones were able to survive such a road. But in particular, if someone had tried to escape, all the others had to stand still. Nobody ever escaped successfully from Dachau concentration camp. Firstly, because of the fence system, I'll explain you that a bit later, but also because of the fact that everybody knew if you only tried to escape, that they would punish all the others, in particular those which were very close together with you. Your roommates, your working mates, and who else would be punished? Family. Your family. Correct. Some German prisoners managed to escape from outside. Oh, only German prisoners. There were lots of working places outside. There were ongoing constructions. Uh, a foreigner never made it out. Yeah, well, as a foreigner, you're, firstly, you're stuck right in the middle of Germany and even all the countries around Germany were under German occupation, so there was no way to go. Questions? Okay, then we go into the museum. I first like to show you a map with all the concentration camps. Let's have a look. 